We've come to be accustomed to fad diets. And so now anything that has the word diet in the title, we look at as not valuable. We look at it as it's something phony, fake, made up. Well, I want to point out that there's two definitions of the word diet. And honestly, I feel like we're so used to using one definition that we have completely forget about the second definition. So I'm going to read you my definitions right now. The first definition of diet, which is the food that an animal or community habitually eats to sustain life. And this is where we can talk about the differences between cultures, the differences between countries. This is where we can talk about the differences between individuals. So for example, of course, there is such a thing as an Indian diet, which is the diet that most people from India would eat. The same way that there is a Swedish diet, which is the thing that most Swedish people from Sweden would eat. However, there's also what we would say each individual. So Michelle might be from India and she might eat a subset of the Indian diet, but maybe not the whole thing. And that would be her personal diet versus Michelle being from Sweden. She might eat a subset of the Swedish diet, but not the whole diet. And even more interestingly, Michelle from North America might eat a Swedish slash Indian diet because maybe she's born to a family that has both Swedish and Indian descent. And maybe even in her diet, there could be some standard American diet. So my point being is that every culture has a diet and every person has a diet. It's whatever they habitually eat in order to sustain themselves. Now there's another definition of diet, which is this, and this is the, the one that people get stuck on. The second definition of diet is a special course of foods that an organism eats to restrict intake for either weight loss purposes or medical reasons. And this second definition seems to be the only definition of diet that anyone wants to pay attention to. I'm talking about it today because I want us to understand that that's not the only definition of diet. And as a matter of fact, it's not the best definition of diet to use no matter what you're doing. First of all, my name is Val Rivera, and the reason I make these videos is to help people to understand that your physical health and your mental health come together to create your well-being. And I believe that when we understand things, we make better choices and we have better health. Today, what I want to point out is that looking at diet in that second definition, so a restrictive eating process where I'm either trying to solve metabolic issues or solve a weight issue, is a short-sighted way of seeing diet because it focuses you on one specific reason that you would pay attention to what you're eating. And I believe that that's a mistake. I also believe that if you're focused on weight management and then you look at diet through this lens, eventually your diet will fail. If you're trying to lose weight, so let's just start there with the people who are trying to lose weight. And you're looking at your diet from the point of view of what I'm doing right now in order for me to weigh a certain amount. The piece of the puzzle that I think most people don't think about is that if I become very restrictive in what I'm eating right now, then am I actually enjoying my life? So if I cut out foods and only restrict myself to foods that I actually don't like, can I maintain this forever? So am I enjoying my life right now? And can I maintain this forever? And chances are you won't be enjoying your life right now if you don't like the food you're eating. And you won't be able to maintain this forever if you don't like the food you're eating. So looking at diet through this very small lens of do this for right now to make your weight come down or do this for right now to solve this metabolic problem is a mistake. It's important for you to eat foods you enjoy. It's important for you to eat foods that are nutrient dense and nutrient density is important because it's what's going to fuel your body. It's important for you to eat foods that will sustain you over long periods of time and that you will have access to. If you're making this lifestyle change, then we need to think about how do I maintain the gains that I'm going to get. It's important to be enthusiastic about your meals if you're a person that likes meals. So what I mean, what I'm saying by that is some people really do live to eat. And if that, if you're one of those people, then creating a meal plan for yourself, that's not fun is creating a meal plan that eventually you're going to give up on. So then we have to ask ourselves, what happens when you reach your goal? Maybe I've struggled through six months, eight months, maybe even a year of eating this way. I hated every moment of it. Now I'm at my goal weight. So, so what happens? How do I now maintain all the gains that I've made in those months? If I go back to eating the way that I was eating, what's going to happen? My weight's going to rise again. Now, what do we already know about yo-yo dieting? Most people who yo-yo diet end up at a higher weight than where they started. 
And yo-yo dieting is yo-yo dieting. It doesn't matter if you're doing a well-planned ketogenic diet or you're just restricting and doing some kind of cabbage diet or something. If I'm not eating well and if I'm not eating foods that I know I can keep eating going into my future, what I'm doing right now is a yo-yo diet. And what will happen is that I will decrease my foods enough for sure that I'll be able to lose weight. And somewhere around six months, my body will recalibrate itself. Actually, it does it throughout the time, but somewhere around six months, my body will have recalibrated itself to the new um, level of food that I'm ingesting. And what do you think happens? When my basal metabolic rate comes down to match the calorie intake that I have, I'm going to start gaining, I'm going to stop losing weight. And if I stop losing weight and I don't love the way that I've been eating, my weight's going to go back up. Why? Because I don't love the way that I've been eating. The truth is, even if I did all this through a calorie restriction type protocol, if I plateaued at a point where I still loved what I was eating, this could be my new set point, right? If I lost 10 pounds, I could, I could be now going forward in my life 10 pounds lighter than I was before. It might not have been the goal that I was aiming at, but would I be happy with 10 pounds? It's better than being 10 pounds heavier. The problem is when we get to that plateau, if we hate the food, we go back to eating normally. And because our basal metabolic rate has fallen during that calorie restriction, when we start eating normally, our weight rises. What I'm suggesting is create a healthy plan for yourself that includes foods that you love change the way you're eating so that the foods you're eating affects you in a better way. Now, what does that mean? If all I do is calorie restrict, diet after diet after diet, and now we're talking about diet number two, has shown that that's not successful. But if what we do is we change the way we're eating in a long-term plan that focuses on eating foods that doesn't rise our insulin, well, if we don't raise our insulin, we don't gain weight, and as a matter of fact, if we keep our insulin low, we actually lose weight. And the best way to do that is to eat a low carb, high fat diet, whether it's a regular low carb, high fat, or whether it's a ketogenic levels, really low carb, high fat diet. And I say high fat, I always add this to my statements because it's, it's high fat in a sense, but not really, because you don't really need to be have your fats excessive, because if you're trying to lose weight, the fat's going to come from you. But eventually it becomes high fat because when you're in maintenance mode, then you eat more fat. So, but in the beginning, it's really a low carb, moderate protein, moderate fat diet. That's really what it turns out to be. And that's very doable for 99% of people. What you don't want to do is low carb, low fat. You'll be starving all the time and you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of a diet. But my point of today's video is helping you to understand that creating a meal plan for yourself where you love what you're eating is the number one thing that you're going to be able to do to make sure that you move forward in life and maintain your weight. Diets are about eating. We, we, we rail against this idea of the being on a diet, but yet we're all on the standard American, standard Canadian diet, and it's horrible for us. We are all on some sort of diet because diet is the word that means what you typically eat. We are all on some kind of diet. So if you're on the standard American diet, that's not great. If you're on the standard Canadian diet, that's not great. Choose a meal plan that's going to help you accomplish your weight management goals, going to help you to accomplish your health goals. The answer to this dilemma is to look at a diet really as a meal plan. It's the things that I plan to eat for the rest of my life going forward. And when I look at a diet that way, then what I will notice is that as long as I plan meals that help me to feel healthy, as long as I plan meals that help my insulin levels to stay low, as long as I plan meals that I'm excited to eat on a regular basis, then I'm going to be able to eat that way forever. And this might mean finding new recipes that you really enjoy so that you can have vegetables that you love, so that you can have meats that you love that are prepared in multiple different ways. This might also mean finding a restaurant that you can enjoy that cooks in a way that you're comfortable, that uses ingredients that you're comfortable with. Finding a restaurant that falls in line with the way that you want to see yourself living for the rest of your life. Multiple restaurants, because we don't want to go to the same restaurant all the time. My point is, if I invest the time and energy in finding new recipes, in finding new restaurants, in finding 
new foods that I can really enjoy and finding different snacks. Maybe my snacking is going to be different if I decide I want a snack, that I'm going to find snacks that fall in line with my new way of eating. If I find all the pieces of the puzzle that helps me to keep my insulin low, because that's what causes fat storage. If I find all the pieces of the puzzle to keep my insulin low, then very likely I'm going to be able to maintain this lifestyle forever. Find the way that you can enjoy your meals so that any diet that you put in place, you will do forever. We're already doing a diet right now, the standard American standard Canadian diet, and it's killing us. Find a new diet to put in its place that's healthier, whether it's paleo, whether it's keto, it doesn't matter. Anything is healthier than the standard American diet, the standard Canadian diet. Find a new diet that you can do that's going to help you to feel great because if you love what you're eating, you'll eat it forever. We've been eating standard American diet forever. If you love what you're eating, you'll eat it forever. If your new meal plan looks delicious to you, then you won't be counting the days until you can go back to eating the foods that caused you to be fat in the first place. Those same foods that caused you to need to diet all the time. Be good to yourself and understand that tasty foods will help you to stick to a healthier diet so that you can eat this way well into the future. There really isn't any reason to be tortured when you're trying to lose weight. So eat well and live well. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet. If it's your first time here, please consider subscribing and click that notification so you know when my next video is coming.